Thanks for tuning into Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. One of my favorite cycling quotes of all time comes from the legendary Eddie Merckx. Don't buy upgrades, ride upgrades. As much as I love that, there really are those times when having good bike gear makes riding up and down those grades that much more enjoyable. Especially if you're a bike nerd like me that enjoys geeking out on gear almost as much as I relish getting out on my bike and adventuring. With that, here are nine essentials for mountain biking and bikepacking that have improved my riding experience enough that I deem they're worthy of sharing with you. Continental Cross King Black Chili Protection Tubeless Tire. I don't know what it is about this tire that's so fantastic and what took me so long to get on board with it, but it pretty much checks all my boxes for a do-all cross-country mountain biking and bikepacking tire. It's lightweight and fast rolling. It's supple, it's grippy in all weather and terrain. And it has great sidewall protection and puncture resistance. As you may know, I've been a huge fan of Continental Race Kings for years. In fact, they're the only tires that I've used on my salsa cutthroat hanging back there. The Cross Kings are pretty much a slightly beefier big brother. I mounted one on the rear while tackling the Colorado Trail, and next time I'll probably use one in the front as well. It's a 29 by 2.3, but it sits more like a 2.4 inch tire. I find Conti often underrates their tires compared to their competitors. <coughs> Maxes. <coughs> They're not cheap, but you get what you pay for. And if your local bike shop doesn't stock them, you can usually find them on sale somewhere if you scour the web. A percussion massage gun. This is one that I'm so addicted to using, I'm not sure how my legs ever lived without it. The farther we get up in age, the longer and longer it takes for us to recover from hard rides. For years, I've sworn by rollers like this stick, and I still use it from time to time, and it's definitely worth having. But this guy just gets deeper, and it's effortless to use. I just chill out on the couch and watch TV, and it feels so good. You can read all kinds of studies out there, but for me, it's been a game changer in three main ways. I find it decreases muscle soreness and stiffness, it helps clear lactic acid and improves blood flow and circulation, which in turn speeds up the whole recovery process. There's a zillion brands and models to choose from, and it seems like they're all pretty much the same. I can personally vouch for this one. It's a Maybach, Maybach, I'm not sure, Maybach 3. My whole family uses it, not just me, and we've beaten it up and taken it everywhere. What'd you say about my mama? Even after a year of non-stop use, it can still go at least a week without needing to charge the battery. And it's pretty quiet. I highly recommend it. I have it in my Amazon store and I'll put a link below. Mont Bell x Lite Wind Jacket. This goes with me everywhere on every single ride. If you watch my Iditarod or Colorado Trail videos, you'll see I'm rocking it pretty much constantly. And no, I'm not sponsored by Mont Bell. This is seriously paper thin, and I'm not quite sure how it does it, but it actually keeps the warmth in and the wind out, which is usually a combo that leads to damp layers and a muggy feeling like most rain jackets. <laughs> Yet somehow, it's actually pretty breathable too. And did I mention it's insanely light at only 49 grams? But wait, there's more. It's also surprisingly durable. You'd think one encounter with an angry tree and it would be shredded to pieces. Nope. Although it finally did get one small rip on the wrist. Where is it here? You can't even see it because I put a clear fabric patch over it, but it's just a tiny little rip. I think it was when I was descending an overgrown section of fooses on the Colorado Trail. Anyway, it's as good as new and it's coming with me on Fat Pursuit. Ooh, my hands are already getting warm. We're just putting these on. Z-Pax Virtus Ultralight and Waterproof Rain Mitts. Need I say more? These things are the jam. I never leave home without these either. The pair weighs 24 grams and can fit anywhere. They're seam sealed and legitimately waterproof. If the weather turns or I'm gonna hit a chilly descent or maybe a rainstorm's coming in, it's nice to have a little insurance policy. I just slip them on over my gloves and smile. The gauntlet is so long, you can cinch them over a jacket as well. Anyway, great piece of kit, and I know they're made for hikers, but Z-Packs, if you're listening, maybe think about making a three-finger version with an independent index finger that would be great for braking. Cyclists and bike packers would love you. Just saying. Garmin Edge 540 Cycling Computer. I've only been using this for a few months, but I love it. I know, I know, I've already heard it. Dude, why didn't you get the 1040 solar? The battery lasts for like 30 weeks and you can go into a cave and still get the solar charging capabilities, blah, blah, blah. 
Quite frankly, I'd love the 1040, but it was out of my budget and I got the 540 for a steal and it does everything I need it to do. It gives me all of the data and tracking info I want. It has Climb Pro, it controls my smart trainer, done deal. I'm not trying to make this a full on review, but if you're in the market for a new cycling computer, consider any of the Edge offerings. 540, 840, 1040, solar, no solar, they're all top notch. Just do the research and figure out the right one for you and your wallet. FYI, if I was gonna do the Tour Divide again, I would probably splurge for the 1040 Solar and ditch the E-Trex altogether. Osprey Duro 6 Hydration Vest. I've never been much for wearing backpacks and I do my best to steer clear of them whenever possible. But during the last year or so, I've been doing many more multi-day rides on Techie Single Track. And I've learned to embrace the practical benefits of a nice hydration vest. Of course, I'd still rather not wear one, but if I have to, the Osprey is pretty comfy. They make an even smaller version called the 1.5, but the 6 has more storage options and pockets without much added bulk or weight. I like having the ability to store extra food or gear, and I can cram a rain jacket in this outside mesh pocket. It's designed around a 1.5 liter bladder, but you can squeeze a 2.5 liter in there as well, which I did on the CTR. Anywho, if you're thinking about getting a hydration vest, there's so many to choose from due to the rising popularity of ultra running. But you can't go wrong with this one. Silka Chain Stripper. Where has this beautiful bottle of love been all my life? The absolute worst thing about a new bike chain is dealing with all that nasty, gunky packing grease that comes from the factory. If you leave it on, your first few rides are gross because it's just a magnet for grit and grime. If you want to strip it off, it's added work with degreasers and solvents, and it's usually a real pain in the butt. That is until Silka released this game changer. It's formulated primarily to prep chains for fancy wax treatments. But even if you're not going to cook your chain in a crock pot, this stuff is still amazing. It makes quick work of factory grease and perfectly preps your chain for good old drip lube, even if you're not waxing. It's also super effective when it comes to dirty, neglected, older chains as well. POC MIPS Helmets. I switched over to POC Helmets this year and couldn't be happier. I use this Tectal Race MIPS for my day-to-day -day single track mountain biking. It's pretty much an enduro style helmet that has great coverage. When I'm wearing it, it reminds me of my old baseball helmets and I just feel protected. It's also super comfy with cushy padding and for what it is, it's surprisingly breathable as well. But I want to focus more on the Octal MIPS Helmet. It's technically a road helmet, but I pretty much use it for all my gravel riding and bike packing. It's exceptionally lightweight with massive vents and great airflow. I weighed it at 299 grams with my light mount attached, which reminds me, it also fits my exposure light mount perfectly. When I'm wearing it, I barely even notice it's there, which is great because I tend to have neck fatigue after long days in the saddle. For how dainty and fragile it seems, it's proven to be quite durable. And it's about time to change the padding out, so I'm glad it came with a spare. Nice touch. This is a Kenko Neck Cloud. This thing looks pretty funny, and you might be wondering what's it all about, especially for riding bikes if you haven't seen one before. But I just mentioned neck fatigue, and this contraption helps a ton. Sometimes after long rides, and especially after multi-day bikepacking events, I tend to have lingering neck pain. It also doesn't help that I have horrible posture, period. I started using this for 10 minutes a day, usually right after my stretching routine. And it's really helped relieve tension in my neck and improve my posture, which has translated to more comfort on and off the bike. So if you've got lingering neck or shoulder pain or tightness after riding, it's really helped me a bunch, so you might want to check it out. So there you have it, 9 bike essentials that I 100% vouch for. So what about you? Let me know your go-to gear in the comments below. If you found this video useful in any way, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, if you are subscribed, please make sure you've tapped the little bell and have your notifications set to all. This way you'll receive updates when we post new videos, and right now, only 8% of my subscribers are actually getting notifications. With that said, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to hang out with me, and until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.